Patagonia. A region of South America widely regarded as one of the rawest, most remote places you can travel to. Winds that exceed 100 miles an hour, towering mountains and expansive deserts. The region is as brutal as it is beautiful. We had always wanted to craft an adventure that would allow us to see this place in a totally unique way. Yeehaw! A challenge that would push us to our absolute limits in one of the most punishing environments on earth. So we set out to create a world first ultra triathlon. An ambitious 1600 kilometer cycle from the north of the region down to El Chalten, followed by a world record attempt 65 kilometer ultra run around the infamous Wemmel circuit. A hiking trail that takes you up over Paso del Viento and the Patagonian ice fields. A four day hike that we wanted to be the first to achieve in under 24 hours. Then finally, a 100 kilometer stand up paddleboard between the two great glacial lakes. The Laliona River had never been traversed on stand up paddleboards and we were aiming to be the first to complete it. What we weren't expecting was the journey down to Patagonia being an adventure in itself. Running to our gate. We arrived on time, but our bags, bikes and paddleboards didn't. So a great start. Just picking up our baggage. That's arrived. No bikes. And my bag isn't here either. We just found out they've left our bikes and my bag in Miami, which now means we've missed our connecting flight to Calafate. I'm trying to see the funny side, but this is a total nightmare. Three days later. So American Airlines still can't tell us where our baggage is. Um, <laughs> they're an absolute joke. So we're still without bikes and my bag. Right. And we um, fly up north tomorrow and they still can't tell us when it's going to arrive. Who do you recommend that we do speak to to find out where our bags are? You can't find a number to track a, track a bag. I said it seems ridiculous that there's no number to track a bag. So we're right now in Bariloche, up north. Hopefully our bikes will be here waiting for us. It's been a... Uh, Oh, tough few days, but we're finally kind of at the start line. Finally, the bikes arrived and we were on our way, heading down Route 7, flanked by the peaks of the Andes and into the unknown. By the end of day one, we had made our first major mistake. We'd pushed too hard, too early, and we'd hit an almighty wall. We're in trouble here. We got about 20k for destination. We've got about an hour of light. We've both hit an absolute wall. Yeah, I've, I've never put myself in a hole this bad. Like, My head's gone. We're basically cycling on like sand that's wet. It is, oh, it is draining. This place is savage, day one. It's like ice. The pace was slow, as we would often fall off due to the sandy roads, and often the 70 mile an hour winds would keep us at a standstill. And due to the terrible road conditions, we kept splitting our tyres. Absolute shocker. So Whistle's blown a tyre. We're struggling to change it. It's getting dark, we're getting fucking cold. We're in the middle of nowhere. Puncture fixed. Ooh. Good job. Oh, shit, it's cold. Let's see how long that one lasts. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Our morale was low, but was dealt a sickening blow when we reached a barricade. Why? Fuck! Oh, fuck. The seven which we're on going south, the only road we've been on. <laughs> this road works and it's shut. It's just construction. Oh no. What do we do? <laughs> we've, just, we've just been cycling all morning in the snow over this mountain to go there. The last 200 kilometers of the Route 7 was closed and unpassable. If we've got to turn around, I'm not sure I can do that. 
I'm calling an Uber. <laughs> this meant turning around and doing a 300 kilometer oh, detour. God. But our luck changed. 20 kilometers away, a ferry was crossing a lake that would allow us to proceed east and join the Route 40. We would head south across the Patagonian Plateau, a barren and ancient desert. The Route 40 was pure monotony, mile after mile, day after day, exactly the same. How are the legs feeling? In pieces. Finally, after nine days of pure hell, battling everything Patagonia could throw at us, we saw the unmistakable peaks of Cerro Toro, towering above El Chao Ten. This was our finish line. We've made it to Chao Ten. Oh my God. Unbelievable nine days. Some of the toughest we've ever had. Yes. Without a doubt. We've had everything. We've had rain. Oh, yeah. We've had snow. So cold. We've just had the most brutal winds imaginable. My, my legs are gone. Oh, yours? My legs are like concrete. Somehow we've dragged all this kit along with us on our bikes. Oh, stage one done. Now it's time for stage two. Oh no. The ultra run. Oh no. Our first point of call in El Chaltem was to speak to the park rangers. We had to get a sign off from them before taking on the Wemmel circuit. They gave us a 24 hour window before the weather would close in and any sort of rescue would be off the cards. So we packed our bags and at 3 a.m. headed out the door, armed with a baguette, a couple of energy bars and a bottle of water. We genuinely didn't understand how naive that was. Weather's looking windy, but no rain at the moment, which is good. So yeah, we should be heading off for the next 10 minutes or so. Now onto the trail. Ooh. Here we go. At the start of the uh, Quemel circuit, we're about to head down there. We are go. Time check. Exactly 20 past three. Nice. Saturday the 14th. Into the darkness. We don't know what's about to fucking hit us. Just crush it. Peace. The trail took us through some of the most insane landscape we'd ever seen. Up mountain passes and across ice fields, over ravines and down goat tracks. So we've reached our traverse. We've got to get over on this sketchy little thing. That's sweet. We'll do, do a rock, paper, scissors and see who gets the honour of going first. On three? Yeah, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ooh, okay. So do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay, cool. Here we go. Woohoo! Yeah! Well done! Well done! Hang on. Oh, sorry. There you go. Cool. Turn next. Yeehaw! Go on, boy. Good work. Quick stop for a bite to eat. Really hot. Legs are beginning to. Yeah. My okay. back is very touch and go. What have we got left? 22k. Um, just over. Just over, yeah. 25k. 25k. We've done 30, 34. We followed our GPS and slowly watched the kilometers tick away. So, we've arrived at the bottom of the glacier, which is pretty crazy. We were happy with our pace and were making good progress, but unsurprisingly, had ran out of food. This is tough. This stuff, again, again. We lost the path and we just had to climb up 100 metres, which took about 20 minutes and just absolutely blows your legs to pieces. Ah. It 
it wasn't until the sun started to set that we really felt the weight of the previous 50 kilometers and the 8,000 feet of elevation. Just what you need at the end of the toughest day of your life. An abseil. No, it's not. It's not. It's not at all safe. That is one thing. It is not. I know. Oh God. Stupid, isn't it? Let's not do that ever again. People must die. The mother of all bonks was upon us. We're just on the descent down from the Paso de Huemol, uh, and it is a brutal descent. As the sun went down and we reached the end of the trail, we had one last traverse, 20 metres over a freezing river in the pitch black of night. So we've uh, just arrived at the last traverse, which is over a 12 metre span of water. It's pitch black. I've never seen anything like it. 17 hours and 30 minutes after starting, we made it. According to the park rangers, this was the fastest known time to complete the Wemmel circuit. We finished in the dead of night, but suddenly realised we had no way of getting home. So we're pretty lost. Is everyone down there? Feet are like drenched and freezing. And there's just no signs. It's pretty disorientating up here. We were beyond exhausted and now face the very real challenge of walking 16 kilometers back to our hostel in freezing temperatures. Our GPS and phones were completely dead and we had to rely on one another to get through this final hurdle. We finally arrived back into El Chao 10 at 4 a.m. So it's the morning after the day before. I don't know how we did that. No, me neither. Amazing. Uh, it's normally a four day hike and it was even far tougher than we expected. We uh, had two traverses, two summits over mountain passes. Uh, it was just bruising. We were on ice and rock and shale and mud and marsh. And our plan was to uh, finish the trail, which we did, and then get someone to call us a taxi to take us back to Chow Ten. However, because we got so lost so often, we got back in the dark got pretty disorientated uh, and nowhere was kind of open. Yeah, so we, we had to uh, we had to hike the remaining 16 kilometers from the finish of the circuit back to the town and the hostel that we're in now. Um, there's no taxis, obviously we had no, no batteries, nothing we could do. Um, so we faced a 16 kilometer walk in the strongest winds I've ever felt. Yeah. Uh, and we ended up arriving here at 4 a.m. this morning when it was all locked up uh, and we had to sleep on the porch. <laughs> so it just summed it up, summed up the entire day. But we came here with a goal that a lot of people thought wasn't possible and we crushed it. And it's worth all of the pain. Yeah, it's a, an amazing feeling to to have done it and then slightly worrying to know that we have a paddle board around the corner as well um, which we are in the process of prepping for and, uh, and getting ready for so fingers crossed that's kind to us <sighs> stage three coming up <sighs> of all three legs the stand-up paddle board was the one with the most potential for disaster our comprehensive planning for this trip hit a major hurdle as we had failed to find any articles about the Laliona River, let alone find someone who'd been down it. 100 kilometers of meandering river that we mapped out purely from Google Images. We had to leave this one to luck and hope that the flow wasn't too fast, the rapids weren't too strong, and that there were suitable riverbanks for us to sleep on. One thing we did know was that the water temperature was six degrees so this was going to be a game of staying dry, staying out of the wind, and preparing ourselves for long days. Oh, morning of the day one of the paddleboard. Let's do this. Here we go. Woo! It's freezing. So <laughs> cold, we're not getting up. <laughs> so we've just left on the paddleboard uh, about half an hour ago. 
place is incredible. Guys, the pace is rapid. <laughs> Zoe, we're gonna get there this evening. Much easier than running. I was hoping for walking pace. I don't think I can sprint this fast. After hours on the water, it was about time we found somewhere to set up camp for the night. We found a riverbank and made our base, having taken everything we needed along for the journey. Well, nearly everything. So Whittle needs to go for number two. Got no loo roll, so we're trying to think of what he can use. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think he wants to use... Uh, we've got... We've got pesos. <laughs> I actually think he's going to wipe his ass with money, <laughs> which I think is absolute genius. I've always wanted to. I don't know if it's illegal like in the UK, but there it's, you go. It's the most expensive shit ever. I only use it if I absolutely have to. You're going to use it, aren't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go as soon as you turn that off. <laughs> Day two kicked off with the finish line only 50 kilometres away. Final morning in camp underway. Woo. Beef and potato stew for breakfast. <laughs> Classic. As expected, we slept terribly last night. It's really, really cold. But it was, it was freezing. Who cares? Who cares? The weather was the best it had been for our entire time in Patagonia, and we were granted a safe simple and somewhat enjoyable final day on the stand-up paddleboard to finish what was an incredible three weeks. We can see the bridge. That is our finish line down there. Yes! We'd made yes. it. Thousands of miles, three different disciplines across two countries. What an incredible part of the world. We were truly exhausted and ready to celebrate. Just like that, all of the hours of training, travelling, and eventually traversing Patagonia yes. were all worth it. 